welcome to my studio. Today we're going to be reading this book, Miss Alanius, A Vocabulary Disaster. And it's written by Deborah Fraser and illustrated by Deborah Fraser, and that's me. So let's get started. Here's how it begins. None of this would have happened if it wasn't for forest. Forest is not a thicket of trees. Forest is a boy, a sick boy, a boy sneezing and coughing all over my desk and pencils. I caught forest cold and had to stay home from school on Tuesday. Tuesday is vocabulary day at Webster School. Follow my advice. Never get sick on vocabulary day. On Tuesday afternoon, I called my best friend Star, who is not a luminous celestial object seen as a point of light in the sky, but a very smart girl who listens perfectly on vocabulary day. She was late for baseball practice, so she spelled the first 14 vocabulary words as fast as she could. I had to scribble them quickly because her mom was calling her to the car. The last one's miscellaneous, Star yelled. I gotta go. I hope you feel better tomorrow, Sage. And she hung up the phone with a crash. And here they are. Forest, meet Forest and Sage and her friend Star. These are the words she received. 15 words. Number one, dinosaur. Number two, snake. Number three, museum. Next is reptile, constrictor, herpologist, fossil, carnivore, herbivore, nest, species, theory, hypothesis, Number 14, category, and number 15, Miss Alanius. Oh, look how she has spelled it. Miss Alanius. I didn't feel much better on Wednesday, so my mom called Mrs. Page, who is not a single side of a printed sheet of paper usually found bound in a book. She's my teacher. And actually, Mrs. Page is a good name for her because she reads to us every day. My mom told her, yes, I had my math problems and vocabulary words, and yes, I would get better soon. Every week, Mrs. Page gives us a list of words with a theme like story writing or musical performance or electricity. We're supposed to look up each word in the dictionary, but sometimes I already know the words. So I try to make the definition sound like I look them up. Like, for example, tree, a large leafy plant with a tall wooden trunk that pushes roots into the ground and branches into the sky. Pretty good. Automobile, a vehicle used to transport humans, usually consisting of four wheels, a steering wheel, and a radio. Automobile. I thought I was pretty good at definitions until this week. My mom says, pride goeth before a fall. Pride, an unduly high opinion of oneself. Goeth, old English for to go, fall. What happened on Monday? Vocabulary test day. By Thursday afternoon, my head felt like it was stuffed with cotton and my throat felt swollen shut. I finished defining my vocabulary words while propped up in bed with a tissue of, on one side and giant red dictionary on the other. It's hard to look up words in a huge book while you're in bed blowing your nose, so I made my own dictionary language for as many of them as I could. Number 13, hypothesis, what you guess will happen in your science experiment. Number 14, Category, a bunch of things that are alike. Number 15, hmm, Miss Alanius. The last word seemed a little odd to me because I couldn't figure out what she had to do with snakes or categories or theories. Mrs. Page rarely gives us people's names on our vocabulary lists, but we have had a few that turned into words like Louis Pasteur for pasteurization, and George Washington for 
Washington, D.C. So I decided she must have been included for a reason. You know that for years I had wondered who Miscellaneous was. When I was little, I figured out that she had something to do with the kitchen because the miscellaneous drawer held the spoons too big to fit anywhere else, the sharp corn holders shaped like little tiny cobs, and the spaghetti spork, that weird cross between a spoon and a fork that perfectly lifts slippery spaghetti out of the bowl. I thought, Maybe she was an ancestor, an ancient relative long dead, who left us all these odd things in the drawer. Then, just last year, my mom and I were at the grocery store and it all fell into place. We were in one of those very big hurries when she said, now you go get some of that long Italian bread and two sticks of butter. I'll get miscellaneous things and meet you here at the cash register. Well, I found the bread and the butter and my mom came back with spaghetti sauce, a can of Parmesan cheese, a can of corn, and a big green box of spaghetti with a beautiful woman on the front and she was drawn so that her hair tumbled perfectly across the box and ended in a little plastic window making the spaghetti look just like the ends of the strands of her hair. There she was, Miss Alanius. So, propped up on pillows in my bed with a tissue in one hand and a pencil in the other, I wrote number 15, Miss Alanius. The woman on green spaghetti boxes whose hair is the color of uncooked pasta and turns into spaghetti at the ends. And then I fell asleep. I finally got better over the weekend and felt great on Monday. I turned in my homework to Mrs. Page and sat down at my desk, glad to be back at school with my friends. I was even glad to see Forrest at our morning circle meeting. First, I want to remind you of the 10th annual vocabulary parade on Friday, said Mrs. Page. I hope you are all working on your word costumes. Second, please remember to bring your bus money and permission slips for our science museum field trip tomorrow. And third, instead of our usual Monday test, we are going to have a vocabulary B today. Everyone line up here by the chalkboard and I'll choose a word from our list. And so here they are, all lined up at the chalkboard. After I pronounce the word, please spell and define it. If you are correct, go to the end of the line. If you miss the word, please sit down at your desk and look it up in the dictionary. Write the word five times and define it once. Star was first with the word Museum, museum, M-U-S-E-U-M, -E she said. A building for exhibiting objects about art or history or science, she said, and went back to the end of the line. Cliff, not a high, steep face of rock, but one very tall boy, answered to the word dinosaur, D-I-N-O-S-A-U-R, a prehistoric extinct reptile, often huge, and he went to the back of the line. I was 10th, and when Mrs. Page called out my word, I spelled capital M-I-S-S, -S, capital A-L-A-I-N-E-U-S, and added, the woman on green spaghetti boxes whose hair is the color of uncooked pasta and turns into spaghetti at the ends. There was a moment of silence in the room. I smiled at Mrs. Page. She waited to see if I would add anything else, and when I didn't, she grinned. Not smiled, grinned, to draw back the lips and bare the teeth as if in a very wide smile. 
and the entire class burst into one huge, giggling, laughing, falling down mass of kids. Forrest was doubled over. Star, my best friend, was laughing so hard, tears came to her eyes. By now, even Mrs. Page was laughing. Pride goeth before a fall. I was sage, one who knows wisdom, experience, judgment. Why were they laughing? Wise girl with words, my dad always called me. What had I said? I was beginning to turn red, red, the color of embarrassment. Finally, the room quieted. Mrs. Page opened her dictionary and wrote on the chalkboard, Miss Alanius, adjective, consisting of various kinds or qualities to a collection of unrelated objects. My jaw dropped as I looked at the spelling. My eyes bulged as I read the definition. I didn't bother to tell anyone about my mom and the spaghetti spork and the grocery store. Humbled, aware of my shortcomings, modest, meek, I dragged back to my seat and wrote miscellaneous five times and defined it once. And that's when I remembered I had even drawn a picture of the spaghetti box for extra credit. I was devastated, wasted, ravaged, ruined, destroyed, finished, brought to an end. They called me miscellaneous for the rest of the day. Sometimes a person couldn't even get the words out before bending over with laughter. The day took a week to end. When I got off the bus, I slumped home, devastated, ruined, finished. I told my mom the whole story, from the kitchen drawer to the grocery store to the vocabulary bee. Even my own mother laughed a little at the part about the drawing for extra credit, but at least she stopped fast and said, you know what I always say? There's gold in every mistake. Gold, a bright yellow precious metal of great value. Mistake, something done, said, or thought in the wrong way. Impossible, I told her. Impossible, not capable of happening. Here she is arriving home to show her mother everything that happened in the day. I couldn't believe I ever had to go back to school, but the next day we went to the science museum and everyone forgot all about miscellaneous at the snake exhibit and the dinosaur bone lab. And then the guide said, the field of bone archeology span has been influenced by a wide and unusual array of miscellaneous discoveries around the world. The class burst out laughing and the guide was pleased with herself for entertaining us so easily. And I knew to apprehend with certainty that my mistake was still alive and well and nothing like gold. After school, I lay on my bed and stared at the wall. How could I have been so stupid? My mom came in and said it was time to go to work on my costume for the vocabulary parade. We had finished the cape for the word capable, but I still needed to make the lettering down the back. Mom, I said, I could only be a mistake this year. Miss Steak. Suddenly, I sat up. I looked at my mom. She looked at me. I smiled. She smiled. And she said, Sweetheart, let's take another look at that cape. So off they went, stitch, stitch, cut, cut, snip, snip. And the next day, it took the most courage I've ever had to walk out on that stage as Miss Alanius, queen of all miscellaneous things. But 
With Mr. Bell read my word and definition, everyone applauded and laughed wildly in a manner lacking all restraint, and I grinned at my mom across the auditorium. Forrest came right after me. When he bowed, his precipitation watering can hat rained on Mr. Bell's new suit, and the entire audience gasped, then cheered when Mr. Bell smiled at his soggy clothes. Have another look. There's Forrest, and there's Mr. Bell about to get rained on shortly. To my astonishment, great shock and amazement, I want a gold trophy for the most original use of a word in the 10th annual vocabulary parade. So this time, mom was right. There was gold in this mistake. Look, there they all are lined up on stage in all their costumes for the 10th annual vocabulary parade. And so, so this time mom was right. There was gold in this mistake. And next year, I think I'm going to be mysterious investigator of all things mysterious. And that is the end of that story. Thank you so much for listening.